Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're watching The One Muslim. My name is Rami. Welcome to my channel. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that like button. Click that subscribe button. Help me reach 5,000 followers, inshallah ta'ala. 5,000 subscribers. So the more I can do for the da'wah, the more I can serve you, inshallah ta'ala, with some great, amazing content. There's so much I have in store. So please like and subscribe and you'll help me out so much. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to have a bit of a Bible study. This Bible study has been sitting in my to-do list for a while, in my reaction to-do list. This is from Rosie's Corner, Sister Rosie. I think she's done an amazing job answering some of these questions and I thought it deserves its own reaction video. Let's go. Bismillah. What's up everybody? Um, so I've been getting a lot of comments. Um, and it, it's been a little, it's been a little tough. Um, but because of all of these comments, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do a deep study um, of the Bible and God will guide me to whatever he wants me to find. And so basically, it seems like she's getting a lot of comments from Christians, right? Um, probably attacking her, um, so on and so forth. Uh, to my understanding, SDA. Um, she was an SDA Christian. So, you know, there's been a lot of backlash to her and I, and I really, um, appreciate her steadfastness and going back and doing a bit of a Bible study. And this is going to be so beneficial for the Christians out there, um, to consider Islam, consider reading the Quran. This is no joke. This is for you, for your benefit. Inshallah. When I say that I did a deep study. I mean a deep study. That is a deep study, right? Okay. A deep study. Um, so even if you're Muslim or you're non-Muslim, I suggest or I advise or I would love for you to stay until the end of this video as it's going to be probably one of my like most important videos um, on my channel. This video is also in Spanish. Um, so you guys, if you don't speak English that well, you can go check it out in Spanish as well. Um, so if you have a Bible nearby, um, or if you can look up the Bible on your phone or anything like that, please do. If not, I will also be putting the text on the screen. So let's get into it. Let's go. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I am going to read the text. I'm going to tell you where it is so you guys can look for it. Okay. If you need to pause, by all means pause. Um, and then I'm going to give just like a small, like, Small details um, after. So Christians, get your Bible out. Get ready. Get a highlighter. The text. Um, so first we're going to start in Genesis 12, um, verse 2 and 3, which says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So this was this, this reminds me of a verse in the Quran that goes um kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas you are one of the most greatest nations to have come to people This is where God is promising um to bless Abraham's descendants right We're we're all on the same page Cool let's keep going the next one I'm not even going to put my inputs or anything I'm just going to read and you guys can Grab what you want out of it. Let's go. Come on. Genesis 17, 4. It says, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. So here, God is repeating his promise to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And this is after Ishmael is born and before Isaac is born. Okay. Next one. Genesis 21, 12, and 13. It says, But God said to Abraham, be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For through Isaac shall your offspring be named. Mm -hmm. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So here, okay. God is specifically blessing Isaac, but he is also specifically blessing Ishmael. Both of them. Okay. Keep going. We're still on the same page. Everybody, everybody's following along. And by the way, I'm learning here too. I don't know much about the Bible, but this, this is an eye opener. This really is an eye opener. Good. Okay. 
next. Genesis 21, 18. It says, Uplift the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Here, God is promising um, to Abraham that he will make the descendants of Ishmael a great nation. I hope I pronounced this right. Deuteronomy 18.18. It says, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren. Oh my God. Doesn't that... Wow. Doesn't that sound like a verse in the Quran? Really? Sounds like a verse in the Quran. Among their brethren. Give me a second. That's correct. I did a bit of a search because I remember that this, this is similar to a verse in the Quran which says, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ Surely, a messenger has come unto you from amongst yourselves. Grievous to him is that you should fall into trouble. He is ardently desirous of your welfare, and to the believers he is compassionate and merciful. Wow. This is, I think, from Surah Al-Ahzab. Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 128. That is very, very close to that Deut Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy... Um, First in the Bible, subhanAllah. And will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I commend. So here, Moses, this is God talking to Moses, and he is telling him how he is going to bring a prophet from, they use the word brethren, um, which like in the Spanish Bible, it says brothers. Um, but if you think about it, the brethren of the Israelites would be the Ishmaelites, since that's Abraham's yeah. others. But anyways, yeah. let's keep going. Okay, the next one is Deuteronomy 33, 1 and 2. It says, Now this is the blessing with which Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai? Sinai? and Sinai? Sinai. I don't know. And dawned on them from Seir. And he shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. We're just going to keep going. Genesis twenty one twenty one. Okay. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. So here it's talking about that Ishmael lived in Paran, the same Paran that is said in Deuteronomy 33, 1 and 2, which is mm -hmm. what Moses said about the prophet that was to come that God has uh, had told him about. We're still, we're still following along? Yeah. Let's keep going. Psalms 84, 4 through 6. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose mm. heart is set on pilgrimage. Mm. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they... Baca? Man, I... That's the old name for Mecca. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. So, where it says they pass through the valley of Baca, it's spelled B-A-C-A, -A, but... B-A-K-K-A-H was the ancient name for Mecca. Yes, exactly. We'll That's... keep going. Wow. So here Isaiah Whoa, is, okay. speaks of the beloved one of God, um, his his elect, his the messenger um, that God have chosen to bring down a law awaited in the isles and who shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment on earth. Right? You following along? Okay. In verse 6, he said, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. When he says to the people, he's referring to everybody, right? The whole world. Verse 11 says, 
Let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Sela sing. Let them shout from the mountaintops. Kedar. Who is Kedar? Let's go to... I wonder if I heard that. I've heard and these that. were the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, Nebajoth, okay. then Kedar and Ab Abdi Abil and Nivsan. Anyways, but Kedar was Ishmael's second son. I will also add here that he's one of the ancestors of Prophet Muhammad, but we'll keep going. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce this, but in yeah. English, but in Spanish is Abaku. I don't know if it's the same in English, but Abaku 3, 3 says, God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Uh, his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. Hmm. Here it speaks that God, uh, God's help is coming from Timon, which if you look it up is an oasis north of Medina, according to J. Hastings, Dictionary of the Bible. Mm. Okay. And the Holy One is coming from Perrin. <clears throat> Did we say lived in Perrin? Oh, yeah. Ishmael. And a lot of people will say, oh, no, the prophet that was to come was Jesus. Did Jesus come from Perrin? No, he didn't. <gasps> Let's keep going. Isaiah 21, 13 through 17. And the title of this is called A Prophecy Against Arabia. Let's go. For they fled from the swords, from the drawn swords, from the bent bows, and from the distress of war. And thus the Lord has said to me, within a year, according to the year of a hired man, all the glory of Kedar will fail. The survivors of the archers, the warriors of Kedar, will be few. Mm. The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. So here, the incident of the migration of the prophet and his persecuted followers is very vividly described. Let's keep going. Deuteronomy 18, 18 through 20. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their brethren mm. and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So when he says a prophet like you, he's talking about a prophet like Moses, because he's talking to Moses here, right? He also is described as one in who in whose mouth God would put his words. And that, and that also is uh, very similar to what is in the Quran in Surah An-Najm, um, where it is said that uh, how the divine word was given to Muhammad Sallallahu the revelation that he does not speak of his own desire. It is not but a revelation that is revealed that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not talk from his own desire, he does not speak and utter anything from his own desire, but it is everything that comes from his mouth is revealed, is revelation, even the hadith, subhanAllah. And he shall speak in the name of God, hmm. which is exactly what Prophet Muhammad did. Yes. Prophet Muhammad spoke only the words that he heard from Angel Gabriel. And you could think like, okay, no, it was it was a demon talking to him or it was Satan talking to him. Wouldn't Satan or a demon tell you to worship other gods? Wouldn't it tell you to worship multiple gods? But instead, the Quran only talks about worshiping one God and one God alone. Exactly. Which is our creator. Hmm. Huh. Let's keep going. John 16, 13. And this is jesus talking if you go to a red letter bible you'll see that it's in red red okay however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come hmm. jesus was foretold that the one to come after him but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. 
which is also exactly. how Moses described the prophet in Deuteronomy 18.18. Mm. Also, it's, in Isaiah 42, verse 9, it says that the former things have come to pass and new things I declare before they spring forth. I tell them, I tell you them. And he it's, it's like all of them, all the prophets have said the same thing. All the prophets have called to one God, Allah. And they've, and it looks like, as the Quran has said, also there's remnants, remnants, and I say that very loosely, of truth, very loosely in the Bible. Remnants of truth for those who can pick it out because it's all, it's not the word of God. It's, a, it's you know, we're clear on that. Um, but there's remnants of, there's indicators, remnants and indicators that the prophets before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have alluded to and advised that there is someone coming and they've described him. They have described him on how he will talk, on how he will speak, and where it's coming from. Take note. Here, Jesus is also saying that the one to come will tell you things to come, which is exactly what Isaiah stated in chapter 42, verse 9. Also, in Isaiah 42, verse 1, he says, My servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the Gentiles. God says that he will put his spirit upon him. Mm. The same spirit that Jesus is talking about here. Angel Gabriel. Isaiah 42, 10 and 11. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth. Mm. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you coastlands, and you inhabitants of them let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice the villages that kadar inhabits let the inhabitants of sela sing let them shout from the mount from the top of the mountains so isaiah here is making a connection between the messenger and the descendants of kadar mm. who we already established that is ishmael's second son in verse 10 it also says Sing a new song. Mm. Hmm. Maybe a new scripture? That's really interesting because the Quran is sung in a particular way. Not really sung, it's recited. So, you know, obviously the translations into English and that's another whole can of worms that we know about. But, yeah, they will sing a new song. They will sing or they will recite a new scripture. Subhanallah al -Azim. And to be saying to the Lord. Hmm. So the new scripture will be recited to Allah, the Lord. Recited. Well, <laughs> this is mind-blowing, guys. Come on. Wake up. What sounds like that? Oh, yeah. The Quran is recited like a song. That's Let's right. Let's keep going. Isaiah 28.10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So the Quran was revealed in pieces, pieces. over 23 years. Yeah. And it brings rules for everything, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Isaiah speaks of here. Huh. Yeah, like it gets revealed little by little, here and there. It's, wow. There you go, guys. Go read the Quran. John chapters 14, 15, and 16. Jesus speaks of the comforter who will come after him, who will be sent by God, and who will teach things that in Jesus' time, they would not understand. I wonder why. <laughs> John 14, 26 says, But the comforter, the spirit of truth, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you all, of all that, that, I you. that I have told you. Mm. So the comforter is de described as the spirit of truth. Did you guys know that the famous name for Prophet Muhammad was 
الامين الامين الصادق الامين trustworthy trustworthy the truthful one the It's trusted correct. one and actually many of the christians before um they didn't believe uh that the comforter was a spirit they actually believed that it was a man also when it says it will remind them let's keep in mind that the quran is memorized by millions of people yeah john 14 29 and i have told you now before it happens so that when it happens you may believe yes that's an indication I've given you the details, I've given you, I've foretold you or for whatever it is, I've, I've, I've let you know what's to come so that when it happens, you may recognize that he is a prophet of God and that you follow him and learn from him. This is the message. So Jesus here is warning us that this would come so that we could accept the comforter, the spirit of truth, the prophet that God promised Moses yes. would come. Yes. That we would believe in him. That we would trust him. And follow him. Yes. But let's keep going. John 14, 30 to 31 says, I will not speak much more with you, for the prince of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but so that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father commanded me, so I do. Get up, let's get out of here. So it says that Jesus loved God, and it was God who sent him. Mm -hmm. It also says, Prince of the world. Do you guys think a spirit can be a prince? Of course not. Huh. John 15 18 says, If the world hates you, know that they hated me before they hated you. So here Jesus is stating the hate that would come to his people. For speaking the truth, yes. Aren't Muslims like really hated? Yeah. Interesting. <gasps> Let's keep going. John 15, 20 to 21. Remember the word that I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. Mm -hmm. But they will do all this to you for my name's sake, because they do not know the one who sent me. Wow. That one hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. that's. So here, Jesus says that all the hatred will be because of his name, because we don't know the one who sent him. <laughs> hmm. Aren't Muslims hated because they think that we don't love Jesus? Because we don't believe that Jesus is God? Mm. But Jesus himself here is saying that God was the one who sent him. There you go. Because people think that Jesus is God, then because of his name, the people will be hated. Will be hated. So like Muslims. Huh. Let's keep going. Deuteronomy 18.22 When the prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if what was said does not come to pass or be fulfilled, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. With arrogance, the prophet has spoken it. You will not be afraid of him. So Moses here is giving us a sign of how we can determine if the prophet is a false prophet or a true, or prophet. A true prophet. He says that if what he says comes to pass or is fulfilled, then that's a true prophet. If it doesn't, then it's not. It's not. It's not the word of God. Hmm. Aren't like all the things in the Quran coming true? Like they're being fulfilled? Exactly. Huh. And in the Quran, if I am not mistaken, it says that we should worship one God, our only God, our creator, the same God that Moses, David, Solomon, Noah, Jesus, etc., all worshiped. Huh. Let's keep going. Mm. John 16, 8 through 11. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin, of justice, and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of justice, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no more. <laughs> and of judgment, because the prince of the world 
has been judged. Huh. Isn't that like exactly what Prophet Muhammad did with the Quran? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Great breakdown, eh? MashaAllah. Matthew 21, 19 through 21. And when he saw a fig tree by the road, he approached it, but found nothing on it, but leaves, and he said unto it, Never again will fruit sprout from you. And immediately the fig tree withered, or like dried up. Hmm. The disciples were amazed when they saw this. And they said, how is it that the fig tree withered instantly? Jesus answered them, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what the fig tree did, but even if you say to this mountain, get behind and throw yourself into the sea, it will happen. So here Jesus spoke of the fig tree, which the biblical uh, symbol is prophetic inheritance. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's let's keep going. Matthew 21, 42, Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected, that one has become the cornerstone. This was done from the Lord, and, and it is mar marvelous in our eyes. The rejected stone. Could that possibly be talking about the descendants of Ishmael? Let's find out. Matthew 21, 43. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation that will produce the fruits of the kingdom. So here, Jesus is talking to the Israelites, right? And he says that the kingdom will be taken away from you wow. and given to a nation that will produce fruits of the kingdom. <laughs> So Jesus was the last, let's say, messenger or prophet or mm. whatever you guys want to call him, of the Israelites, right? Mm. He was he was the last one. In Matthew 15, 24, it says, And Jesus answered, I have not been sent except to the lost sheep of the house, house of, of Israel. Israel. So clearly the Bible stating that Jesus came, it was for the Israelites. Maybe after Jesus, it was time for God to fulfill his promise of making Ishmael's descendants a great nation. Mm. And maybe from Ishmael is where that great nation of which Jesus spoke here. Mm -hmm. But let's keep going. Matthew 23, 9 to 11. And do not call anyone your father on earth. Hmm. For one is your father who is in heaven. Huh. Neither let them call you instructor, for one is their instructor, Christ. But the greatest of you will be your servant. Instructor. That is not God. Instructor is a prophet, someone who comes to instruct and teach you and guide you. That's clearly a prophet. I mean, come on, people. The greatest of you will be your servant. Mm. Okay. So here, Jesus himself is saying, do not call him God since he is on earth, right? He said, do not call anyone your father on earth. Okay. And he says that the instructor is himself, Jesus Christ. A prophet. And that the greatest among you will be his servant. Do you guys think that the spirit, like how, how people say, like the Holy Spirit, do you think that that can be a, a servant? Hmm. Maybe it's talking about Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 33, 2. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Those ten thousand saints 10, was the exact number of men who accompanied Prophet Muhammad in the war from Paran. Do you guys think that it's a coincidence that like all of these texts point us mm -hmm. directly to Prophet Muhammad? But but let's 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 do a little bit more of a deep dive. Why 
couldn't the prophet be Jesus? Well, Jesus himself spoke of the prophet to come or the spirit of truth or the comforter. So it wasn't him. Jesus was also nothing like Moses. Mm. Like God said the prophet would be in Deuteronomy. Hmm. Jesus was also never called a prophet in the Bible. They always called him the son of God or the son of man. Hmm. And if we think about it, Jesus didn't come from Perrin. No, he didn't. Nor did he come from the lineage of Kedar? No. Huh. But, but, let's see how is Prophet Muhammad similar to Moses. So they were both giving rules or commandments or guidelines. Laws. For life. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. The two of them fought against enemies and miraculously won. I suggest you guys read the story of Prophet Muhammad and uh, like the war that with the elephants and all that. Y'all should really read that. They both were accepted as prophets. They both had to migrate to another place because they were being persecuted. Yep. They were both born naturally, unlike Jesus that was born from a virgin, Virgin Mary. Hmm. And they both had families. Yeah. I don't recall Jesus getting married or having kids. Yeah. So to me, it seems like there is the Old Testament, there is the New Testament, and there is the final testament. The Quran. Hmm. Mm. So I know, I know it's hard to, to unlearn the things that you have been taught. Um, but it is hard to unlearn the things you've been taught. If you've been told one plus one is three your whole life and someone comes and tells you one plus one is two, the challenge to accept it is a big step. But if you are for the truth and you are searching for the truth, then the truth should always prevail even above your ego, right? Something that I really want you guys to think about is who are you following? Mm. Are you following the church or are you following God and what God taught and what Jesus even spoke himself? Something to think about. While I read this, I, I, I cried, guys. I cried so much. I spent 10 hours straight studying this. I did not get up. I did I 10 hours straight. And let me tell you, this only made my faith stronger. This only assured me even more that Islam is Islam is is the truth. Islam is the way of life. There you go. This is the truth being told by a former Seventh-day Adventist. Now, if none of this made sense to you, then you have issues. You have problems, guys. I mean, watch this video again. And seriously, there are connections to the Quran. There are connections in some verses that are very similar and alike to what the Quran is saying. It's obvious for those who seek the truth. Just like it's obvious for her, for her to go out and put aside 10, 11, 12 hours of her time to restudy all of this again. You know what's happened? She's come out of this with certainty, what we call in Arabic as yaqeen. Now she is not just correct in her mind. She is certain and there is no doubt when you have certainty. So I, I suggest that you do a deep dive. Um, I will link all of the all of the text down below. I will also pull it, put those texts down below in the description box for you guys, okay? So that you guys can look them up and do your own search. And before you guys read this, pray. Pray that God guides you. Give you wisdom and he'll give you the understanding of what he wants you to understand from it.
One more verse that I am going to quote here mm -hmm. is Isaiah 42, um, verse 18. It says, Hear, you deaf, look, you blind, and see. <laughs> uh, the Quran says the same thing, deaf, dumb, and blind. It's looking at you in the face and you still can't see it. It's nuts. Guys, for those who are not Muslim, I invite you to go read the Quran. You don't know what you're missing out on. You're missing out on wisdom. You're missing out on understanding. You're missing out of reading divine word of God, the word of God, not inspired visions, the word of God. Something to think about, something to study, something to dive in. And again, ask God for for wisdom and for understanding so that you can understand this in the way that he wants you to understand it not the way that you have been taught all right guys yeah not the way you have been told to understand it with mental gymnastics crazy mental gymnastics the type of mental gymnastics that make you just look like an idiot i just got to go out there and say it you look like an idiot it's something that you would it's, it's the sort of common sense that if someone was to say say it to you on, on something that's that you do every day you would call them crazy but yet you take that mental gymnastics and you apply it to to something that is so important in one's life which is their religion and their way of life seriously so it was very hard today to not wear my hijab for this video it was also very hard to not greet you guys the proper way the way that i always do in my videos but there was a reason for everything. I hope that everyone was able to watch this, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. I hope that you were able to grasp something or learn something. And maybe God, God opened your eyes or your hearts. And I just, I hope that you got something out of it. it even if it's the smallest thing, even if you just learn something new. Yeah. I, I pray that you got something out of this message. Well, definitely. I learned something out of this message. I could see that with her deep dive into the re researching uh, the different verses of the Bible that has clarified a lot of things for me in my own faith, in, in Islam. And, and this is it. This is it. This is the truth. It does nothing but strengthen me just like she feels even more strengthened, that she has sincerity and there is a sureness, right? There is a sureness um, in what she's saying. So there you go. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the button below. Help me help me grow and, and, and let me see what else I can do for you guys. I'm here to serve you and love you for the sake of Allah. Thank you very much for watching. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.